Hi friends, welcome back to Sew Honey Bee. In today's video, we will be doing the Sophisticated Crafts Designs Packing Cubes. And I have two different kinds to share with you today. The first one I want to show you is with a clear vinyl top. And this bag does not have binding. As you can see, it is birthed. Now this one isn't the one that we will be making today, but I did want to share it with you. And this one is the extra small. So I know you're going to want to make one of these. This clear vinyl I received from Whimsical Fabric Design. And then the black vinyl I received from a and &E Textiles here in Fresno, California. Now this one here is the one that we will be making in today's video. It is a medium. Now even though this is the medium size bag, it is still really roomy. And I use a Cricut Maker to cut out my SVG image here. Now let me go ahead and open it so that you can take a look at the inside. Now the top portion is birthed so that there is no binding on this top portion. But there is binding on the bottom portion. So you can see that there. Okay. Now you have an option to not use binding at all. She gives you a couple of different um, finishing options for this pattern. So this one here is the one that we will be making in today's video. Now before we get started, I wanted to briefly share with you a link that I added in the description below. And that link is to a YouTube video from Jassy over at Sophisticated Crafts Designs where she shows you how to take each of your pattern pieces after you have printed them out and how to tape them together and how to prepare all of your pattern pieces. Now this two minute video will not only help you with this pattern, but help you with all sophisticated crafts designs patterns as well. So you may want to just take a couple of minutes to watch that video before you cut out this pattern. Now also, I have added timestamps in the description below to all of the steps that are available in this pattern. Now there is also a link to take you to where you can buy this pattern. And I want to make sure that you know that is an affiliate link. But there's also a coupon code there where you can use it on any of the Sophisticated Crafts Designs patterns during a non-promotional period. And you can get your patterns using that discount code and it saves you a little bit of money. And don't forget to please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have anything to say, just put it in the comments below. I always like hearing from all of you. Okay, so that's all the stuff. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started first of all with our grab handle, which is piece F. Now I've already drawn a line down the center and placed double stick tape on both sides. Now bring the long edges just off center. Okay, just like that. Now fold it again. Now we're gonna top stitch both sides. Okay, just like that. Now I've marked my handle where I'm going to sew the box onto my panel, and this is piece B. I also have a tag that says made in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> now on the back of piece B, what I have done is I have marked where my handle is going to go and taken a little snip on both sides. Now I wanna put a piece of double stick tape there. I wanna make sure that my handle is going to be below that snip and straight. Oops. 
same thing to this side. Okay, now she has it to where we put a tag in here. But you see how that's where my box is going to end? I'm going to be sewing a box right here. But you can see how my tag is longer than what my box will be. So my tag isn't going to fit in there. So I'll decide to put this on another section. Now, if you have a really thin foot on your machine, you can actually use a ruler to do this box. But as you can see, I have a walking foot, so I can't do that. Now I want to grab my side gussets, which is C. And I want to put them right sides together with my handle. And so using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now turn out that seam and top stitch. Okay, so now I want to put my exterior side. Now I want to do the same thing to my lining pieces. Now my fabric is directional, so I want to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. So here's my um, top gusset, and then here's my side gussets. Make sure they're going the right way. I usually use waterproof canvas for my lining, but this time I used a cotton fabric and I backed it with SF-101. Now my exterior piece, I have the seam allowance going towards my side gussets. So for this one, I want to do it the, going the opposite so that there's not so much bulk in these seams. So I'm going to top stitch these seams going towards my center gusset. Now this is completely top stitched and I've got my zipper and I've cut it to length and I've burned the edges. And now, oops, I don't want to lose that. Now I want to add my zipper pulls to my zipper. You should have two zipper pulls going in opposite directions. Okay, so this is the top edge of our gusset because our handle is closest to this edge. I want to take my zipper and put it right sides down. Now 
Now I cut my zipper a little bit longer so that I could put my zipper pulls at this end so that they will not be in my way and I won't have to move them over. So as you can see, both zipper pulls are at the end and they are off my fabric and I put a clip right here so that they don't fall off completely. Now I want to baste my zipper to my gusset. Now I want to grab my lining and place it right sides together and I want to make sure that my direction is going the right way. Now before I sew on my zipper, I want to switch out my presser foot to a zipper foot. I want to try something. Now, naturally my brain tells me to sew this lining like a facing. So I'm going to top stitch my lining to my zipper first, and then after I do that, top stitch my vinyl down. So then I'm only having to deal with my vinyl's edge and not the lining. Now you can skip this step and do it all at the same time. But I'm trying to get better at my zippers. So now I want to top stitch my lining and my vinyl down to my zipper. Okay, so now I want to take my base gusset, which is D, and you should have an exterior and a lining piece. Now I want to put my zippers in there. Now I want to trim down my gusset. Burn my zipper. Now I want to take my gusset base and sew using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'll do this side as well. But for this one I want to make sure that my directional fabric is going in the right way. And again this is a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm going to switch back to my regular presser foot. And then top stitch. Now I want to bring 
this side over. Let me trim it down. And I want to place my exterior to exterior. Then I want to grab my whole exterior and lining piece and roll it up like a burrito so that my lining piece is left on this side and everything else my exterior is all rolled up. So now I want to grab these two pieces, bring them together. So it should look like this. You should have your exterior to your exterior and your lining to your lining. And the rest of your gusset should be in there like that. Okay? So it's like a burrito. Okay. So now I want to sew this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance just like on the other side. Okay, so now when you turn it out, now your gusset base should be like this. Okay, so now I'm going to top stitch on this side. And I'm stretching this like this to make sure that my lining and everything is in there just right where I want it. Now I'm going to base the bottom all the way around. And I'm going to do it lining side up. And I want to make sure that my two seams meet each other, and they do. that I didn't sew this top portion, so let me baste it really quick. And now I want to trim my edges so that they are all one size. So now I want to find my centers, my gusset, I've marked my quarter points on my gusset and my panel. So now I want to take my center which is here where the handle is. And I want to take the top portion and I want to meet my top center to my top center of my exterior right sides together. And then I'm going to clip it going all the way around. Now I want to make sure that my placement is correct before I do any basting or sewing. This is the top of my gusset right here, and this is the top of my top panel. And then here's the bottom, there's the bottom. And I can see too that the direction of my fabric is going the correct way. So now, I want to baste this 
on using a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. thing moved so I'm going to clip it again to make sure this is correct. Okay, now I'm going to put my zipper foot back on. Now you do not need to necessarily put a zipper foot on. If you do not have a zipper foot for your machine, you can just sew on the zipper using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now I'm ready to pin my lining to my gusset. I really want to make sure that I'm going in the right way. So this is my top this is the bottom. So I want to kind of smush my gusset all the way in. Then I want to grab my panel, my lining, and I want to put it right sides together with my gusset, making sure that this is the top, this is the bottom. Before I clip it, I'm going to open out my zipper. It'll probably be a lot easier. So now I want to leave this bottom section open. That's why I didn't clip it because I want to make sure that I remember to leave this section open because that's how we're going to turn this panel right side out. I'm going to go ahead and sew this using a one quarter inch seam allowance with my zipper foot. So I moved my zipper pull out of the way to make sure that it didn't mess me up and now I've moved it back. So now I'll continue. You want to be really careful in these corners so that you don't run over your zipper. Really take your time around these corners because your zipper can try and bunch up on you or try and fold out. And if you just go really slow, it's a lot easier. Okay, I wanna be really careful here because this is where my zipper pull is. I wanna make sure that I do not run over it. So let me move it out of the way. Okay. 
So now I'll turn out the inside. I want to zip up my panel to make sure that I'm happy with the stitches before I do any top stitching. Make sure everything's going the correct way. I'm happy with my corners. Okay. And on the inside, I can see that my fabric is going the correct way. But, actually, it's going the wrong way. <laughs> I just realized when this... Well, let me see. Oh no, I guess it's right. Because when this goes open, like this, it'll be going the correct way. So yeah, I did that right. <laughs> okay. I just had to think about it for a second. Okay. So now that I'm happy with everything, now what I've got to do is I've got to pin this down here. I think I'm going to add some double stick tape to it. Just right here to close up our turning point. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Let me get a piece of double stick tape. That is long enough. So now, my opening seam right here is now closed up. So now what I want to do is I want to top stitch this whole panel. Should I top stitch it? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to top stitch it so that this lays flatter right here. So now what I'm going to do... So I'm going to start at the bottom, press that down there, or so I'm going to clean up my station, and put back on my regular presser foot. Now I'm going to start at the bottom because I want to make sure that my back stitching is going to be not seen. Okay, so I'm going to put that.
did I just, oh my goodness, I ran out of bobbin right there. I had like six inches left. <laughs> oh my goodness. Today is a happy day. <laughs> okay, so now. those look good and I'm happy with it okay so now let me check this bottom to see if it got caught all the way and it did let's see right there no it did good good I'm glad I'm glad okay okay friends we're in for the home stretch <laughs> I'm gonna find my centers did I find my centers over here? No, I'm gonna find my centers. So now I wanna put my final piece on first. So let me turn it this way, make sure I'm going the right way, which doesn't really matter because there isn't, um, didn't find the edges on this one. Here's my top, here's my bottom. Doesn't really matter with this one, but for the lining portion it will. So I don't want to meet. And do the same thing all over again. Clip all the sides, your exterior to exterior, and your lining to the lining. But be careful, make sure if you have a directional fabric like I do on your lining, that your lining is going the right way. Now what I'm doing is I'm manipulating the bottom gusset so that it won't um, get any tucks or anything. And then here, when I let go of the clip, I'm still hanging on to that. So uh, my fingers are acting as a clip. Okay, here's where my hair clip was. So I know my tag is right here. I'm going to go in a little bit more to make sure that I catch it. I'm going to have to bind this bag because I'm using cotton fabric. And this cotton fabric will fray. Now, if you're using a waterproof canvas or a utility fabric of any sort that does not fray, you can actually just put that on this side and then just um, top stitch over here, just like we did the top stitch on the front panel, on the top panel. Okay, but because I'm using cotton, I'm going to do the binding. So let me close up my zipper. Now I want to put on my lining portion on this side. Now when I open up my bag like this, this is my top portion. Is it my yeah, it's my top because my handle is right here. Okay. So I want 
my piece to be going up and down like this along with the top. So I'm going to clip this now on there all the way around. now I'm going to sew this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. it all the way around with them <laughs> without running out of bobbin. Okay. So now, let me look at it to make sure that it all looks good. Okay. Is that a tuck? Oh man, I got two tucks right there. Okay, those look good. That looks good. That looks good. But right here I got two tucks. You see I got one right there and one right there. So let's see what went on with this panel here. Oh, right there. Okay. So I am going to show you how I am going to get rid of these tucks. I'm going to snip there at that tuck. And where's the other tuck? I'm sorry it's a little hard I know it's a little hard for you to see because this fabric is so busy but what I've done is I've snipped the fabric in between the two tucks okay so now it's open there where that tuck was Now there was no tuck in the basting portion, so that was okay. So now I'm going to go back right into where my seam, let me get all, let me clean up my station first of all. Okay, now I'm sewing it with my gusset up so I can fill it. I'm just going really slow. Closer. But you see how those two tucks went away? Okay, so, oops, didn't mean to hit the camera. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit closer in there. Probably like a sixteenth of an inch.
okay. It's all gone. Okay. I'm happy with that. Again, now if you are doing a fabric that is not going to fray, you can just top stitch this here like we did the top and make sure that your seam is getting caught in that top stitching. But as you can see, I do have cotton fabric, so I am going to use binding on this. So, let me open it out and zip it up. so that the portion that I'm trying to bind is what the only thing that is exposed. Okay, so let me go get a piece of binding and I will be right back. Okay, so now before I set up for my binding, I wanna make sure that all of this is one length. So I wanna trim it down, not a lot, but just barely, mostly to make it, to make sure that it is all, my seam is all one length only. making sure that I don't cut off that quarter inch that I've just sewn. And you need a very sharp pair of scissors to do this with all these layers. Okay, now I have a piece of double fold bias tape. It is purchased bias tape. And let's see, where's my top? This is my bottom. So I want to start at the bottom. Okay, now it's all on. And I'm going to sew this gusset side up. And I'm going to hope that my bobbin holds out. <laughs> hmm. Just a little bit longer. <laughs> Open it up, turn it right side out. Now this bag is for my husband, and I know he's going to like it. This summer we will be attending a convention in Bakersfield, California, and he'll be able to use this bag to stick all of his toiletries and everything in it. Usually he has a small duffel bag that he puts all his electric razor and all his stuff inside of but this will be a, a neat bag for him to be able to use. I hope you will make one of these. I really like the way it came out with the SVG and everything. Okay, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.